It is senseless to defend mandates after assuming power. Huh. Good day, everyone. Welcome back to our YouTube channel, Everyday People's Voice. Please follow, like, and share. Hmm. There have been several calls for the judiciary to sit and decide the true winner of the 2023 presidential election before the inauguration of the president-elect on May 29th. The senior advocate of Nigeria, Femi Falana, has also shared his opinion on the matter. The Laga Eagle, speaking in an interview with Arise TV News, explained that the two major things the court needs is the report from the IREF and the Beavers. He clarified that the petition does not have to last for six months as stipulated in the Constitution. He argued that when the law was set up, nobody knew that the Beavers technology and the electronic transmission of results will occur. According to him, Nigeria will have to replicate what Ghana and Kenya had done in settling their election matters before the inauguration. He stated clearly that there is a need for a reform and for election petition to be taken directly to the Supreme Court. He said, in most other African countries, you have a constitutional court. This petition goes straight to the constitutional court. And this court takes only 14 days to conclude the operations. At the time, the constitution provided for six months, nobody knew we are going to have the use of beavers, machines, or transmission of election results to the central server of IREF. For me, if you have the reports of the beavers machine that was captured the election and the results that have been uploaded to the IREF, if you have those two, the election petition can be decided in 14 days. It doesn't have to last for six months. Fallout from Nigeria's disputed presidential election has become the Cardinal's Lamentation, sort of like the Book of the Old Testament, traditionally ascribed to the prophet Jeremiah, who was lamenting the destruction of Jerusalem. And traditionally, when the faithful gather to read the scroll of lamentations, it is a day of unrelenting sadness, a day to mourn the many evils that have befallen the eternal victims. In this case, at least in the eyes of John Cardinal Onayekon, the Nigerian people and the shattering of their electoral hopes. And so for him, after that ill-fated election and the subsequent donning of sackcloth and ashes, the time for atonement is here. And in that regard, it doesn't make sense to swear in people when there are issues to be settled in court, issues that have to do with legal challenges and the legitimacy of the electoral process. Well, he may well have a point. Well, the fact is that electoral law as it currently stands means that the inescapable destiny of Nigeria is that on May the 29th, Bola Ahmed Tinubu will be given the keys to the Aso Rock presidential villa. No two ways about that. So how then to resolve that dilemma into the future? Well, for more on this, I'm joined now in the studio by Nigeria's master of jurisprudence, Femi Falano, who is a respected constitutional lawyer, human rights activist, and senior advocate of Nigeria. What a pleasure and an honor to have you here, as always. Thank you very much, Charles. I thought I was listening to a pastor. <laughs> You mean when we're talking about lamentation? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's only in, in, as it relates to the card. Old Testament. Yeah. yeah. But Nigeria's big elections, the official results obviously came in some time ago in favor of Bola Tinubu and the APC, but now it's mired in legal challenges and lamentations of almost biblical proportions, yet the inauguration is going ahead because that's the law. But is it a moral ethically sound law? Is it a fair rule? Charles, I, I think it's too late in the day uh, to cry or be mourn of it. Since 2010, we have engaged in a consistent campaign for 
far-reaching electoral reforms along the lines suggested, the recommendations of the Waste Panel, which had said on this uh, forum, uh, those recommendations were adopted by the panel set up by uh, uh, President Jonathan following the crisis uh, that attended the 2011 President, presidential uh, election. Yaradua. Yeah. Okay. No, it was a waste panel was set up by President Yaradua. Right. President Jonathan set up the Amel Lemu uh, panel, right. which adopted the recommendations of okay, uh, yes, I see what you mean. Yeah. Ways was saying again, President Buhari set up the Ken Namani panel, which also adopted the basic recommendations of the Waste Panel. Yeah. But to master the political will, to master the political will to implement these recommendations have always been the problem. Because the people in power want to take advantage of the loopholes in the law, including those who are complaining now. And if you look at the dramatic personnel, which of them has not enjoyed what we are criticizing now? Governor Bola Tinubu, Vice President Atiku, Peter Obi, if I'm more than anybody. Had their elections challenged? And when those elections were challenged, they were in power. President Obasanjo and Vice President Atiku in 2003 and 2007, when they were challenged by candidate General Muhammad Buhari, they were in power. In fact, in 2003, the election petition did not end until 2005. Now, the case of Peter Obi is more interesting. Here was a guy who was kept out of power for three years. He won election in 2003. Mm. But I not declare that uh, Dr. Chris Ngidi was the winner of the election. So, the petition was contested for 35 months, almost three years. And the fairness to Governor Obi after the verdict of the Court of Appeal. So what? Well, I better go to the office to complete, you know, to spend whatever is left of the time. And I said, no. I ruined like a lion in Lagos. No. Your opponent had no time of office because his election had been annulled. So you can't complete his time of office. So you are going to start your own four-year tenure the moment you take your oath of office. Every lawyer said I was talking bonkum. But later, he took advantage of my position and fought the matter from the High Court to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court made the point that your four-year tenure commences the day you are sworn in. Mm. So I, I, I think I was, you know, I, I, I was discussing, I think... Sometime last year, ask uh, Governor Obi, you took advantage of my advice. You haven't paid me. I'm going to pay me. You know, I like that. Uh, it was a public duty. You he didn't you buy you a bottle of champagne. I'm disappointed. No, no, you just said uh, no. You, you know, you were rendering a public service. Yeah, yeah, of course. But after that, in 2007 again, no, 2009, Obi won the election, and the Uba went to court to say, whereas in 2007, I never had come conducted an election, which was illegal anyway, and he said he had won. Therefore, my term of office, <laughs> you know, was kept in the cooler. I said, what, what are you talking about? Again, the battle went up to the Supreme Court. Governor Obi was in office. Mm. At the end of the day, the Supreme Court upheld, you know, and decided that the election the gentleman was talking about was illegally conducted. Dr. Dachi Ahmed won election to the Senate in 2011. I think under the platform of CPC. His opponent, uh, former Governor McAfee, went to court and was in court for almost a year. Eventually won. And Dr. Dachi Ahmed, who had been in the parliament, was then asked to vacate. 
because it was proved that he didn't win the election. But he has spent about a year in the parliament. So this is the position. What the respected Cardinal Onayeka is talking about is what in law we call delegate veranda as opposed to delegate. You know, what the law is as opposed to what the law should be. I, 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 for me, I, 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 and I've, I've always believed that all election petitions should be concluded before the inauguration of mm. an incoming government. But again, this time around, it's not limited to uh, the president-elect. All the governors who have been elected, including the uh, LP, Labour Party, a governorship candidate and a uh, 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 governor elect, elect in Abias in Abias will be sworn in. All the legislators who have been declared winners of the election on the platform of PC, um, APC, uh, PDP, Labour Party, and all of them mm. will also be inaugurated on the 29th. Right. But for the, for, May. for the benefit of our audience uh, who may not know these things, what is the law as it stands today yeah. with regard, for example, to the presidential? Yeah. Now, um, you know, tribunal. I mean, because, of, yeah. I mean, there, there are different time of, frames yeah. for each level, but, but, aren't they? By virtue of Section Two Eight Five of the Constitution, mm. election petitions shall be heard by our courts and determined within a period of one eighty days. That's six months. That is on the tribunal level. Yes. Yeah, the presidential. Also, at the court of appeal level. Right. So that's another six months. No, no, no. For the presidential election. Right. It starts at the court of appeal. And then you have an option to go to the Supreme Court. Yes. So if you have 180 days in the court of appeal, you have additional two months, 60 days in the Supreme Court. Right. In the case of governorship, which is the only one that allows for three stages. Yeah. You go to the election petition tribunal for 180 days, court of appeal for 60 days, Supreme Court for 60 days. That's keeping the governor in office for 10 months. Yeah. While his opponent or his opponents are fighting the legitimacy yeah. of his election. So this is the position. In fact, uh, there's a provision of the Electoral Act, I think Section 120, which provides that 